Good afternoon all. Welcome to today's information processing webinar. My name is Gan Krishna. I'm the National Sales Manager for TVET at Macmillan Publishers. We have provided you with sample books, both print and links to ebooks, information videos, curriculum guidelines, and an implementation schedule. Should you not have seen any of these, please contact me. You'll find my email in the chat box. We have designed this webinar to take you through the changes from the old to the new curriculum and show you how our book TVET First addresses these changes. Uh, just to uh, enlighten you about the platform we're using, there's a control panel which you will find on your right hand side. Alet, can you just bring up that slide, please? Later. Okay, great, thank you. So the control panel, I think the important thing is that you are all muted now. So we'll give you the opportunity towards the end of the webinar to raise your questions if you want to pose a question. But in the meantime, if there's something you'd like to find out and uh, make use of the chat box, you can pose your question there and uh, we'll be able to address it either during the webinar or at the end when time allows us to do so. So there's a volume button, there's, you can raise your hand. And what we'd also like to do is conduct a poll just to get a, your, your take on what you're looking for in terms of a textbook. What are the most important things you look for as a lecturer? So that'll come midway through uh, a let's presentation. Uh, your presenter for today's webinar is Alex Tienkamp. Just a little information regarding our presenter. She's a lecturer in information processing since the introduction of the subject, information processing examiner and moderator for many years. So you really have a, a seasoned professional conducting today's webinar. And I'd like to hand over at this point to Alet to begin the webinar. Over to you, Alet. You may begin. Thank you, Ken. Um, in this webinar, I would like to briefly describe the new curriculum outcomes for information processing. The curriculum chances are a wonderful challenge, and the content of this syllabus is aimed at rounding off the student for the future career and completing tasks independently with confidence. Macmillan TVET First Book, Information Processing, Support Your Lecturing. The student guide refers to each point of the syllabus with explanation of each point. The exclamation involves the program in detail with sketches, notes, and rules. Much emphasis is placed on the program because it is the basis of the student's ability to process a document. Lecturing information processing is now a blessing. In the lecturing guide, everything is well laid out. Each activity is explained in detail with mark allocation and mark rules. Now, Macmillan TVET first information processing has been updated for implementation. The changes in the DHET curriculum for information processing 2021 have been simplified in the student's guide, as well as the lecturer's guide. In the student guide, the syllabus was followed step by step with detailed information. In the lecturer's guide, all the information that a lecturer needs are available. Processing rules, program rules, manuscript rules, marking rules, and so on. Everything is inserted in the lecturer's guide, even the syllabus. The student guides are laid out and numbered exactly like the syllabus, and nothing is left out. The general and specific aims of the information processing remain the same in the new curriculum. 
refers to page four of the curriculum document. We aim to improve the student's skills, specifically their typing techniques and word processing, to a level of mere excellence in order to prepare them for the employment as a personal assistant. The specific skills are all related to typing technique and word processing. Typing technique is the first part of the book. Key in the document according to the program rules, keying in rules and proofreader rules. Save the document and close. The word processing section is where you manipulate the information with the program. Never ever delete or retype anything. Use the program to correct it. Um, students must obtain plenty work-related learning on the computer. Lecturers must maintain close contact with the industry in order to remain up to date with latest developments. The word processing assignments must reflect actual office work related stimulation. The work produced by students must be presentable to the industry. The ability to proofread all work and correct errors quickly. Use the program. Accurate and efficient use of all corrective methods must be emphasized throughout. The spell checker function must be used in the typing technique and word processing modules. Word processing functions and skills. Preparing the student for tasks related to a personal assistant. The ability to work independently. Using existing knowledge and skills. Working at an increased tempo and at a more advanced level. Applying word processing skills to other programs for Excel, PowerPoint, because bold is bold, and you get bold on the same place, on the same toolbar. We no longer refer to typewriters. We do not work on typewriters anymore, but on computers. Typing, we do not type anymore, but key in the information. Typists or secretaries but personal assistance. We process information and key it in. The appropriate terminology is computers, keying in, and personal assistance. Students must have passed computer application technology, grade 12, that is the CAT program, office data processing level 4, it's the ODP, Introductory Information Processing Level 4. 17 weeks, one semester for full or part-time students. The syllabus is worked out for the time limit. Keep in mind the exam and test weeks must also be taken into account. Seven hours per week. Typing technique, four hours, and word processing, three hours. Section A, typing technique, has 13 modules. We will look at the changes in the more detail. Section A, typing technique is allocated 80 hours of contact time. The following changes of waiting have been made. Module 3, menus is now worth 4 marks, 
that is now this is on the N4 level. Module 5, business letters, is worth 8. Module 6, official letters, 7. The assignment in module 10, using columns and tables, is worth 9. Financial statements and tabular statements are both worth 12 marks, giving a total of 100 marks for this section. Pay attention to the weight changes. The weight of each module gives you an indication of how much time should be spent on each module and the mark allocation. Section B, word processing, has 11 modules with similar titles to those in section A. Here you go to key in the activity A and save it. Then you retrieve the activity A and do the changes for the program. One very important point, make sure students save the A activity before they start with changes in the B activity. Some students lose all their section A marks because they immediately start with the changes in B. And now they did not save an A document, so they cannot print it. The hours for each section is already worked out for you. Compare the weight and the hours per section. Every question in word processing is divided into two parts. Part A, the application, see that the accuracy here is 80% and the display is 20. The accuracy you mark with red and the display you mark with blue. Part B, analysis. Here the processing is 80% and the accuracy is 20%. Note that errors are penalized with one mark per error. An internal continuous assessment. Internal, I, continuous, C, assessment, I, CASMO, of at least 40%. And then you need 80% class attendance. The examination, typing technique 200 marks and word processing 100 marks. Converted to a percentage. A minimum examination mark of 40% is required to pass. To pass a final mark of 40 is needed. I guess to exam 40 to 60. To change to section A for the new curriculum affects seven of the modules. Module 1, 2, and 10 refer to the next slide. Module 5, more focus on electronic letterheads. Students can also um, make their own letterheads and then save it and later retrieve it and carry on with the letter. Module 12. On one sheet of A4, the landscape paper, replaces two sheets of A4 paper, or one sheet of A3. Fold the paper and show him the difference. Content to fit columns, no longer the block method or the equal column method. Module 13, diacritic, any mark, dot or sign attached to a letter or character that is not in the type belong, use your ASCII codes.
time accuracy test. Previously called 10 minute speed drills, make table included. The mark table is included in your lecturer's guide. If a student did not finish the speed, do not mark it as a zero. Count it back. Look in your lecturer's guide. These need to be done every week. It is no longer necessary to have five minute time accuracy test. Time accuracy test, no more than 18 errors accepted. It depends on the level of the information processing. The correct sitting posture and height of seat is moved from module two. This is so important. The correct posture determines the speed and skills. And the lectures focus on that. Application or display functions, some new content. In our book, this is taught throughout modules to support content as students practice different skills. Proofreading signs, it's new. This is a list of proofreading signs in the lecturer's guide. All assignments using columns, tables is seven hours. All new content replaces assignments on folded paper. Inserting columns into a document and tables. See the changes on slide 29. Module 14. This section comparing computers word processing and typewriters has been deleted as it's no longer relevant. Basic computer knowledge has been updated. Module 23, tabular statements, seven hours. Contents to fit columns, no longer the block method or the equal column method. Retain as default columns. Module 24, they are critic marks. The TVET first book for information processing produced by Macmillan and Tropen are aligned to the requirements of the new curriculum. The books are laid out with useful features that help you and your students to navigate you, your way through your studies. From introductory in up to N6 is all experienced TV lecturers and national markers and authors. Every level of information processing, from introductory information processing up to N6, has fully covered the 2021 20, national curriculum. Now, thank you again. Over to you with the poll. Hi everyone again. So I'm going to launch the poll now. Um, and you'll have the option of selecting any of these or all of these. It's up to you which one you want to prioritize. And then I'll talk through the percentages as you make your selections. So I'll give you about two minutes to complete the poll and then we'll just look at the results very quickly. So everybody's uh, favorite seems to be exam tips. That's 100% thus far. 
uh, activities, quite highly ranked vocabulary as well. Seems like summary is not that important to you because it's only 30% have elected summary as their choice. So just over half of you have made your selections. I'll give you another minute for the rest of you to catch up or to make your decision. Exam tips that's top of the pile, followed by activities. Then uh, a number of you have indicated vocabulary is something that you look for. Notes and lastly, summary. So 61% of you have voted. We'll give you a few more seconds just to up that rate so that we get, uh, give all of you an opportunity to participate in the poll. Okay, um, another 10 seconds and then I'll close the poll and I'll share with you what the choices were. Okay, time's up. I'm going to close the poll. And on your screen, you can see the results. Definitely everybody wants to see exam tips in a book, followed by activities. Uh, notes and vocabulary about the same percentage and summary seems to be the, the one that all of you are not too concerned with so exam tips and I think uh, following this Alette will show you how the book addresses these choices of yours and how it's covered in depth okay thank you very much for your participation Alette you may continue thank you Every module in all the textbooks has an overview and outcomes. In the slide paragraph, as on your screen, each type of paragraph to be taught is mentioned with a brief description of the rules applied there. Now you can see what you're supposed to do in this module. Accuracy and speed. I think I need a day for this. Focus on accuracy and the speed developing. Let your students do a checklist before each activity. This is just a review of the program features. Then, basis of the activity is correct. The marking for speed accuracy test document is in your lecturer's guide. Use it and explain it to your students. Let the students mark their own speed and work out their own marks. Show them how to mark. I always say you put one finger on your textbook one finger on your screen so that you can mark it word for word. If you scan it, you don't see the accuracy errors. Teach them to identify the errors. Explain to them if the speed is not completed, there is still hope. Explain to them the count back system and how points are then calculated. 80% or more of students do not even make an effort to type speed in the examination. Give them confidence. Begin to complete each activity according to the recommended time. There are no display errors for speed. Proof reading signs. The examples on the screen. Uh, is to understand the difference, different formats for official letters and business letters. 
In your lecturer's guide is a complete list of proofreading signs. Office data processing is based on three legs. Number one, program work. Number two, typing rules. Number three, proofreading signs. If a student knows these three, I can give them any document in the world and they can type it. Students must be able to complete the different columns in the proofreading document. A proofreader sign test is very important. Let them use a lot of activities and describe the proofreader signs in the activity until they are comfortable with the signs. Proofreader signs is a part of the display errors and therefore blue errors. You penalize each blue error only once in an activity. Look at the groupings. You always mark the display errors before the accuracy errors. So you use your blue pen and mark all the display errors. Why? An instruction to correct a typing error. If it's wrong, and it's a blue error if you mark, but if you mark the accuracy errors first, you will think it's an accurate error. So mark the blue and then you start marking the red. Word processing functions start at day one and will be completed with initial keyboarding and are taught and used throughout the modules. You start with very short activities. Then there is a time for repeating the program. Then the students do not get tired of all the keys that they must practice and the program features make better sense. Switching the computer off after each activity in the beginning and then switch it on and redo every function again. Teach them every day a new function. Follow your student guide and the lecturer's guide and you will know exactly what to do. The activities, lots of activities for daily drills, ensure that students improve keying in and processing skills. In your lecturer's guide is a complete explanation for every activity in the student guide. Now we get to the summary. In the poll I see not all of you think that's very important, but I think it's important. Summaries at the end of each module. Now you can check that you have completed the whole syllabus. Also indicate this to the students and they must tick it off. Now they're sure they did everything. Summative assessment in each module for exam practice. This is a blessing for lecturers. The assessments are adjusted according to the requirements of the module. There is a complete marking guideline in your lecturer's guide. You can just hand out the assessments and start marking. The special features, clear exclamation of vocabulary and useful notes as reminders to the students. The vocabulary is difficult for some people. It's the first time that they see that big computer word. So it's important that students must go through the vocabulary. 
You will find this in very every module. Your students must pay attention to this and memorize it. Now the special features for Did You Know and Tips. Did you know additions of interest to the student? That is important because most of the time is revision of the previous work. Tips to do with improving techniques and using formats. The students must pay attention to this. Show it to the students. Because that is most of the time in the margins and they are, their eyes just follow the activities from top to bottom. Then they don't look to the sides. The exam tips. There are also exam tips throughout the book to help students with exam questions and tricky sections. I think you must do this, read this, and explain this to the students. Glossary. The, a full glossary is provided, provided at the back of the book. Show it to the students. And if they look for a word, a very big word, ask them to go to the glossary and see if they can't find it. Oopsie. Now, summary of marketing points for the book. All the books are fresh and new with the latest information according to the curriculum by experienced authors and the best publisher, Tropon. So you're blessed with this book. Now, the three important legs again. One, improving accuracy. Two, program work. Three, proofreading signs. Lecturers must please make sure that the students know their program. They must not uh, retype or delete information or anything. They must use the program to fix it. <coughs> but then they must know their program. Proofreading signs. <coughs> Do a revision of the proofreading signs. Have a look and see if they know everything. Um, they get confused with the SP for spelling and the SP for space gaps. They make a mess of that. Make sure that they know how to understand that and take all the difficult proofreading marks and redo it again. Just refresh everything again. There is enough activities and examples for every module. The latest features and tips and notes. Even a student, a student in the far away places can do information processing on her own with the help of these student and lecturer's guides. There is a summative assessment and even a complete internal examination question paper in the student guide and a marking guideline in the lecturer's guide. You can just hand out and start marking. Over to you, Paul, um, Dan. Thank you very much, Alep, for a very informative session.
um, lecturers. I've seen only one question in the question box, and I think I've addressed that. It, uh, it dealt with the sound issue from Colleen. Uh, I haven't seen any subsequent questions, so if you've got something that you'd like to raise at this point, you will see under attendees, there's a hand sign. You could just click on that and we'll give you the opportunity to pose your question and hopefully a little be able to answer it. If it's something that goes beyond the scope of today's webinar, we can make a note of your question and then get an answer later to you. Also under chat, you'll find my email address. And if you have anything you'd like to find out in terms of the documentation that we've been sending through or sample books, please send me an email and we'll be able to assist you in that regard. So I just want to check if there's any hands up. If you have any questions, please make use of this opportunity to get some clarity. And I'll definitely be happy to assist you. What we will also do is make today's presentation available via PDF format, and that will be emailed to you. And you'll receive a, a Google form requesting feedback on today's session. So if you could please complete that and send that through, that should be in your inboxes by sometime tomorrow. So your feedback will be very valuable in us uh, going forward and looking at further webinars and how we can assist lecturers at the various colleges. I'm waiting to see if there's any further hands. No questions. Okay, then I'd say thank you very much for attending today's session and I hope that you've benefited from it. Uh, Monday session would be a repeat. So if you registered for, not Monday, for Tuesday session uh, and you've attended today, so it won't be necessary unless you just want, uh, you know, to just to get the full scope again, you're welcome to attend the second session or you can recommend it to your colleagues at, at your campus. Once again, thank you very much for attending and giving up your time. And thank you, Alette, for a very informative webinar. Thank you, everybody, and goodbye.